Sly Cooper, and Thievius Raccoonus, one of my favorite games of all time. Um, the very first mission, or the, not the very first mission, the very first game I ever had for my, oh, for my PlayStation 2. And it's still one of my most favorite games, honestly. And I'll let him finish. Yeah, I read you loud and very loud. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. Trying to break into police headquarters does that. Get over it, Bentley. You're safe in the van. I'm the thief here. I've got to steal that file from Inspector Carmelita Fox. Well, count on me to be your nearest buddy. Got their security system totally scoped. Get inside. You're gonna have to go through that air vent. All right, I'm going in. And don't forget you got me at the wheel, Sly. All you gotta do is grab the file and get back to the van. We'll do the rest. Just keep that engine running, Murray. I'll be down in no time. As I was saying, one of my favorite games of all time. Um, mostly because... <sighs> Hold on. <laughs> There's a lot of exposition. Exposition. You see those crazy blue lights? Really? I've read a lot of talking. Master raccoon thieves are able to send scenic opportunities, which manifest themselves as unexplainable blue auras. According to my research, all you have to do is get near them and hold down the circle button, and you should perform a super sneaky master thief move. Hold down the circle button near blue aura. I'm on. Anyway, um, I really love games that have feelings of stealth in them, like actual, um, I like actual stealth games, but stealth games can be like, can be pretty unforgiving at times. Whereas this game gives you, it's more like the illusion of you know you might be caught you know but it's more it's more focused on the the gameplay is just more focused on platforming and other such things so like it doesn't get as stressful because it's not completely it's not completely focused on 100% stuff. Like, if you... I always thought it was weird that he would hit... Uh, he would hit random numbers. But it's not completely focused on stuff. Like, yeah, it's really cool when you get to go through an entire stage without setting off alarms or anything, but it's not like you're completely screwed if you... If you... If you get caught you know so you feel really badass when you when you're able to just do really cool thief things and steal items and um yeah it's just all around a great game you foolish raccoon i've caught you red handed ah carmelita mm -hmm. i haven't seen you since i gave you the slip in bombay which reminds me you need to return the firestone of india to its rightful owner uh -huh. but i was going to give it to you as a little token of my hey you know that bazooka really brings out the color of your eyes. It's very fetching. You think? This pistol packs a paralyzing punch. You ought to try it. Might snap you out of your crime spree. And give up our little rendezvous? Plenty of time for that once you're safely behind bars. Love to stick around and chat, but I just dropped by to pick up this case file. I think you've had it long enough. I think what really makes me love this game the most is just Sly and Carmelita because I have a thing for sassy women and. Sly is just that kind of cool that I always wanted to be. Like, just this super arrogant, overconfident, like, um, not arrogant, but like, oh god, oh god, oh god. But, uh, like, just this really confident person. Like, he's just 100% confident in his abilities and in his charm and just in every aspect of his life, really. And, yeah, it always... Once again, my gang and I have given Inspector It just Carmelita gave me something that I wanted to I was be, you know? To see how well she took it. If 
finally the secret police file I've been searching for all these years. With this, I could avenge my family and regain possession of our most valued treasure. It all began when I was just a kid, bouncing on my father's knee. You see, I come from a long line of master thieves who kept all their secrets of sneaking and stealing in an ancient book. The Phoebus Raccoonus. Anyone who read it learned to be especially sneaky, which is why we specialize in stealing from criminals. After all, there's no honor, no challenge, no fun stealing from ordinary people. You rip off a master criminal, and you know you're a master thief. Well, on the night I was supposed to inherit the book, five visitors came unannounced to our door. My father fought to protect us, but the gang of villains known as the Fiendish Five overpowered him and ransacked our house until they found the Thievius Raccoonus. Our family's manual of thieving greatness fell into their filthy hands. They tore the book into five pieces and split it up, each villain disappearing to the farthest corners of the world to commit dastardly crimes. Broken alone, I was dumped at the town orphanage. There I met two guys who became my lifelong buddies and trusted crew. Bentley, techno genius and strategist supreme, and Murray, part-time driver and full-time burden. Together we pledged to track down the fiendish five, avenge my father, and steal back the Thievius Raccoonus. I knew I was about to face the toughest test of my life. On this mission, I would either become a master thief like my ancestors before me, or fail and allow my family name to bite the dust. That full-time burden thing didn't really sink in the first time I, I heard it, <laughs> but it, it's really funny to hear it now. There's not a whole lot of things to do in here right now, but if you try to go further, Murray's always there doing something, and if you try and click him, he'll be stingy. Yeah, all the levels in this game are really fun. I think so, anyway, and well designed. The road trip gave me the time I needed to study up on Sir Raleigh the Frog. As a young man, this hot-tempered frog grew bored of his life of luxury and privilege. On a whim, he tried his hand at a bit of piracy and found it to his liking. Raleigh, who quickly became addicted to crime, was brought into the Fiendish Five as chief machinist, where his evil tinkering genius rose to new heights. The last reported sighting of this mad machinist was off the soggy coast of the Isle of Wrath a small island uncomfortably situated in the middle of the perilous Welsh Triangle. God, I, I just absolutely love all these cutscenes and how they're set up. And... Yeah. It's just fucking awesome. All these levels are designed really well. They all like they all feel really unique even if concepts are repeated. Hey fly! I just spotted something that's going to complicate the mission. See that nasty looking gate? It blocks the only road leading into Raleigh's hideout. Oh no. circle button to grab it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Relax, Bentley. I live for this stuff. Yeah, and that's what worries me. Alright. Well, it points you to go towards the ladder, but even in the very first, it shows you the benefits now, of exploring. I love the clue bottles in this game, not so much in the second one, just because, for one, I like them because it gives you like an extra thing 
like just an extra little thing to collect and by collecting them you learn new moves and stuff like that um, and also there between the first and the second one the second one makes them so much harder because they completely changed the design of the game and made it more of like a um, for every level was like a hub world and you went on various missions during it but then the worlds were much bigger and therefore the bottles were harder to find especially if you're on bottle 29 of 30 and you're combing the area repeatedly and then you finally find it after an hour hiding under like a small part of the bridge it's just less it's less satisfying because you just find extra power-ups and not necessarily like because in this game you find pieces of Amphibious Raccoonus so you come closer to accomplishing your goal but like in the second game you're just getting extra power-ups most of which aren't that impressive um, honestly I've only collected the bottles in the first three levels all of them weren't very they weren't very cool, like, you definitely got a lot cooler powers, just... Full of money. Uh, yeah. Kind of. Um, what was I saying? I don't know. Bam. This game was really great for me in particular because one of my favorite ga another of one of my all time favorite games uh, is Crash Bandicoot. Specifically, um, Crash Bandicoot Whoa. Crash Bandicoot Warped, and I like Crash Bandicoot Warped the most just because that's the one that I played the most. I mean, I love, I love every Crash Bandicoot game, um, even the first one. But I just had the most experience with the third, so it's the most... I swear, he's not... Okay, <laughs> that explains it. I was hitting square instead of circle. Um, but yeah, that was the crash I had the most experience with, and that's the one I spent the most time with, so it's the one that I have the most fond memories of. Despite maybe... Um, despite maybe Twin Sanity. And a lot of people hate Twin Sanity because... I don't know. I guess the only thing I could think of is that it's short, which it is. You can, or like, if you know what you're doing, you can beat Twin Sanity in a couple of hours. And for me in particular, I'm not really a completionist type person. Like I don't, I don't usually go out of my way to find every hidden collectible or anything. I'll do it rarely with certain games like um like with this game I, I went out of my way to find where every clue bottle was um but at the same time I didn't who share but at the same time I didn't go out of my way to complete every time trial so it's very like selective because, I don't know. So, like, in Crash Bandicoot, I never went for all the gems. So, in Twin Sanity, if you don't go for all the gems, if you just kind of play every story mission through, um, yeah, it, it only takes you a few hours to beat the whole game. And, personally, to me, I don't mind that. Because I loved it all the way through. Because, <laughs> unlike in the new games where they give Crash, like, a weird kind of thing 
I don't know. It's not even the voice. It's just kind of like a, a he does sounds, which makes him. Yeah, I just don't like. I just, ugh, I just don't like the new Crash games. It's really sad. Um, I mean, I guess I kind of liked Crash Team Racing. I, I did like Crash Team Racing. It was a lot of fun, and very like interesting. Uh, game wise and even though it was pretty much almost the same as double dash kind of like in con like as a concept um, when it comes to racing games for me it's all about how good the levels look like rat cra uh, 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 crash tag team racing had a lot of um, a really interesting design levels which even when I was racing I was paying attention to the scene crap <laughs> I was paying attention to me talking and not the game uh, I was paying attention to the scenery a lot um, just because of how pretty everything looked and how interesting a lot of the stuff was designed um, so yeah that was one of the games I liked that he had a voice in but I just love the old crash games twin sanity is awesome if you haven't played it you should play it it's it's not hard there's a lot of jumping puzzles Bam! We got our first key. In this game, you've got to collect seven keys per stage. And then you fight a boss. Um, and it's awesome. It's a good concept. That's why I started talking about Crash, really, because this reminds me a lot of Crash and its concept. You just... You go through the hub world, and then you fight the boss. Um, this game does have a lot more stages than Crash typically did. But, yeah. Same basic idea. Uh, Twin Sanity though, yeah, it's awesome. You, it's pretty open world. There's like a linear story that kind of directs you around the game, but um, yeah, it's just a really great time. And if you haven't played it, you should definitely try and give it a go, cause it's you can actually find it for pretty cheap, like less than ten dollars. And I've replayed it like five or six times. Uh, I don't currently own it, which is why I'm looking. <laughs> but yeah, um, if you if you like interesting and weird uh, games with like just silly silly concepts and um, silly humor, it's an awesome game to play. And Bentley's very negative. Um. Well, this is taking me longer than I thought it would. I was hoping to complete this whole thing, but since I'm running pretty late, I'm going to cut it off here. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this a lot, because, you know, this game's awesome and deserves all the praise and all the love. Uh, so I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.